Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing some Belladonna um, for October since it's horror month and I am bad with horror games, but this one isn't as spooky as most horror games. How's it going? What's going on? I have no memories of anything before this point in time. My mind is tabula rasa. Please yes, I am feeling I much better, thank you. I seem to be in some I'm having some sorts. stomach problems though, so if I end up having to take off, that's why. Alright, so. The torture device turned into a strange machine. What kind of place is this? A really, really bad place. My very first memory is waking up on this thing. Before that, nothing. I wonder what I am. Yeah, I have no idea, woman. You're very strange. Books. A lot of natural philosophy and chemistry. Something by an M.W. Shelley. There's a handwritten note here. Maybe it can shed some light on my situation. Maybe. Wow, this is a long letter. Um, it is with shaking hands and heavy heartbeats I gather before me the instruments of my last desperate attempt. I find myself on the threshold of my toils. I don't know what that is. A turning point for should I fail tonight, I doubt I'll find the strength and resolve to continue. At my feet now lays the lifeless remains of my beautiful Belladonna. A few hours ago, my wife was alive and well, and now she's been cut open, dissected, altered, and artificially reconstructed. So he brought back his wife. From the second she gave up her final breath, I have worked tirelessly to preserve and prepare her corpus that I might infuse a spark of being back into her lifeless limbs. Toils works, basically. Oh, okay. Um, this is the final test of all my research and experimentation the past five years. The complete revivification, wow, of a human being, body, and soul. The anxiety I feel is agonizing, but I cannot let it hinder me from carrying out what I must do. For my own sake and for hers, this procedure must not fail. In my feverish dreams, my wife appears as such a lovely creature, so far removed from this crea creation before me. Her cheeks, once so full of laughter, are now pale, almost to the point of transparency. With the skin stretched so thin over the cranium, it threatens to rip at any moment. Ew. Her eyes would shine like the night sky, but are now empty, watery, and yellowish. Stream testing, okay. I have to cling to my conviction that she will regain her former grace and vitality once she is brought back to the realm of the living. Her eyes will light up with the flame of life, a Promethean flame stolen from the very gods. From this night on, man shall be the master of his own destiny, and God shall no longer be above us. As I write, the engines of life are finally heating up. The last of the preparations are coming in order. The crucial moment is ever approaching. The time has come. Success, or come, sorry. Success, the attempt was a success. She's alive. Alright then. Creepy is creepy. Uh, switch. Now is not the time. Aw. So it looks like I can't walk. I, all I can do is click on stuff. There's a screwdriver in this toolbox. You better take it. Well, I got a toolbox. Or, I got a screwdriver from the toolbox. A magnet. I love magnets. Do you know? It looks like the legs of a frog hooked up with wires. And I'm pretty sure it moves when I'm not watching. Creepy. A skull? A 
human skull or a paperweight. <laughs> uh, oil. This looks expensive. Let's waste it. Yeah. How do you know if you know you look like magnets if you have no memory? If you like magnets, yeah, I know, huh? She obviously remembers that. It's a brain in a jar. I wonder what it's thinking. Alright. Anything else that I can click on over here? No? Oh, bone saw. Ooh, surgical tools. Shiny. <laughs> and she took it. Gargoyle. That is one ugly gargoyle. Looks like a George to me. A George, really? Alright, let's look at the tank. I have no idea what's inside of this, but it glows. Whoopee. Alright, so let's exit. The door won't budge. It seems to be barred from the other side. I might be able to unscrew these hinges, though. Oh, thanks for the hint. The screws on these hinges are rusty and stuck. I need some lubricant to loosen them up. Uh, oil? I smeared some oil on the rusty screws. Okay. That should loosen them up. At least so far in I'm this free. game, it doesn't seem too hard. Because normally these games I'm pretty bad at, but they give pretty big hints. What a dedicated knight got a dance done to my fix. That makes me happy. Maybe he was demoted. Maybe he likes the dark. Maybe he's secretly a poet. That's his <laughs> name is Roland. Oh my god. Another Roland. piece of paper. This was written long before the last one. <clears throat> All right. Work is going great. Kept a rat alive for one more hour and 26 minutes last night. We'll move on to larger mammals within the week. I find my life more and more polarized into two phases. I remember times when I used to climb up and down the stairs like a squirrel each day, but now I spend most of my time, and indeed most of my thoughts, down here in my laboratory, only to step upstairs at night to sleep. It is warmer upstairs in the living area, but it is boring and understimulating. Down here is where I make progress. Down here is what matters, and as I lay awake beside my sleeping wife, I often wish I was down here with my experiments. Oh, that's messed up. Eldana grows increasingly distant ever since that fateful night when our baby Lucas gave up his last breath. She has lost all traces of her old self. Aww. God knows. Whoa. Uh, someone just shook my house. Okay. <clears throat> it wasn't an earthquake. I think someone blasted their speakers or something because it shook my house. Um, because we don't really get earthquakes here. Alright, so where was I? God knows what she is thinking about as she silently gazes into the empty chair, empty air, or restlessly paces back and forth in the great hall. I, at least, am working with my grief. I have turned my attention to the science of life and death, and not a day goes by when I do not think of how my son was untimely taken from me. This is the thought that drives me. In this, the greatest of ambitions. My own son will never return. I have accepted that now, but thanks to me and my work, the, the cold, ruthless contrast between living and dead will in the future be much softer, maybe even completely erased. <clears throat> my wife, though, has let our grief devour her whole. She is emotionally and intellectually paralyzed, it seems to me. All of her creativity and quickness of thought, the witness of her speech, and the nimble way she used to jump from one conclusion to the next, all those qualities that made me fall in love with her in the first place, they have all been snuffed out like the flame of a candle. This makes me wonder even more why I bother to go up to her bed every night. The shell in which she has enclosed herself cannot be breached by anything I say or do. Damn, that's, that's screwed up. <laughs> It is almost as though she is involved with someone other than me. I feel ridiculous for even writing it down. No, it seems ludicrous to think that Belladonna's disinterest in me is due to her seeing another man. I will not accuse her of that. It is just one of the many strange ideas that seem to appear in my head when I am down here by myself. I am probably just tired. I'd better try and get some sleep as soon as this rat's heart starts beating. Wow. That is horrible. Um, that is 
a bed. So he has a it bed looks down like here. He's been sleeping quite a lot in this sorry excuse for a bed. It was hardly the suit of armor. No, but probably not. Why would someone choose to sleep down here? I can't see that. There's a, a stick. stick here. Perhaps it was used to try to chase away rats when trying to sleep. Hey, Bizzo. How's it going? Another journal page. More writings from the lonely doctor. Alright. Curse my miserable existence, the hopelessness from which I see no conceivable escape. I cannot rid myself of the feeling that there is something of utmost importance that I need to take care of. That that is that but that it is not the time. Not yet the time. Well, I can't read today. That something beyond my control needs to be completed first. I carry inside me a sensation of waiting, yet I cannot name the thing I am waiting for. In the meantime, all I can do is work. I do make progress, but at an excruciatingly slow rate, and nothing I accomplish seems to calm the anxiety in my head. I sleep only a few hours every night and cannot remember my last hot meal. I am feverish and jump at the smallest of sounds. What is it that I'm missing? I am spending more and more time I am spending more and more time down here with my research. I only occasionally go upstairs to sleep in the master bedroom. Most nights I sleep, if at all, in a makeshift bunk I have constructed in the cellar. It is not as comfortable, but my research is at a point where it oftentimes requires my constant attention and comfort is not my priority. I am certain I am advancing even closer to a significant breakthrough, but it is as though I am powerless to control or even affect the rate of its occurrence. Yeah, that that's not comfy. And I'm sorry, you need sleep to work on stuff. If you don't get enough sleep, you're not productive. <laughs> Alright, on top and on top of this, I cannot rid my mind of the idea that Belladonna has forgotten me and taken a new lover. A new man in her life. Oh, here we go again. Someone more lively than me, perhaps? Someone who can still look at life with joy and optimism to match her own by great tragedy and affected humor. Yeah, who would that be? I can remember friends we used to have. In my memory, our wedding was a crowded and festive event, but it has been years since this castle has seen many visitors. I have no time for social obligations, and Belladonna seems to have given up on everything that is pleasant in life. I suspect the castle is an undesirable condition as well. Almost all of the staff have left us. We are down to one girl who dusts the cupboards and lights and the fireplaces, but I don't see much of her either these days. For all I know, she might be gone as well. There cannot possibly be a man in Belladonna's life apart from me. Hey, Gaming Ray, how's it going? <laughs> okay, so they're both very depressed, it seems. Another locked door. Let's take a peek through. Okay. I like it's a key. It's the key I'm after. I can't reach it with my hands. Let's I try a stick. To retrieve it. Yay, Stardew Valley. Freaking awesome. The stick is long enough to reach the key, <clears throat> but how will I grab it? Um, magnet? Stick? Look, I can attach the magnet to the end of the stick. Yay! I did something right. Another locked door. Let's take a peek through. Yes. I like it. I played a whole bunch when it came out. Yeah. Likewise. Let's hope this works. And I'm back to it again with a new map. Haha, <laughs> just as planned. Yeah, with 1.1 that just came out, Bizzo, there's a lot of new stuff in it. And also, new uh, farm maps. That's why a lot of people are Let's unlock this door. playing it again, including me. That's where I've been mainly. <laughs> Yay. Oh, God, another note. More letters. <sighs> Has he figured it out yet? Long notes. It is a super chill game. I love it. <clears throat> I see now that my suspicions have been well grounded, albeit aimed in the wrong direction. Belladonna is not seeing another man. 
She is seeing a woman. Really? I am convinced that it must be that maid, Claire, or whatever her name might be. She and Belladonna are up to something. I'm sure of it. And to think of all the hours I'm stuck down here, caught up in my dreadful work, leaving them free to roam and left to their own um, devices upstairs. Of course they have found each other. Only living things in this whole castle besides me and my week-long rabbits. <laughs> wow. I think this dude's very paranoid or something. They have it all figured out. When I come up at night, they act all innocent, keeping their mutual secret from me as a playful game. But as soon as I descend into the laboratory, they are in each other's arms again. But what can I do? The progression of events are beyond my control, just like my work. I slave away in my goalish endeavor, making progress every hour, but never getting anywhere. And simultaneously... Simultaneously, I can never say that word right. Um, Belladonna is slipping away from me, further and further for every night, and yet nothing ever changes. He sounds like it. Yeah, I really think he's paranoid. Uh, should I confront them? Storm up there hoping to catch the two in the act, take back the life that was mine, the wife that was mine. Well, you're the one who doesn't pay attention to her at all. Uh, no. I had no reason for my silly suspicions, no evidence evidence whatsoever. Merely a thought stuck in my brain refusing to leave. So I remain passive, as always, and each new day is one more where I am unable to make an action, unable to change my wretched situation. Oh man, so much a reading. A couple of cogwheels on the floor. They must have fallen off the mechanism yeah, he when could the door be right. shut. I wonder if I Who can knows? get them back. Nothing happens. What a strange door. No handle or keyhole. It seems to have some sort of opening mechanism. Oh, I know. It's a secret entrance hidden behind a bookshelf. Only, I'm on the other side of it and see only the back of the shelf. Oh, can I get the nail? This is the nail from which I skillfully lifted the basement key. Alright. I don't know why I thought that would work. I don't know either. I don't know why I thought that would work. Nothing happens. Um. Interesting, but no. Interesting, but no. Alright, so... Oh, okay. I see him. There's a square one Not right yet. there. Um, so, start up here? Yes. Little triangle. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Grr. Try and go. Sweet. Is it just me or the audio is pretty low? It's good for me. I could turn up, up the game. Is my mic okay? Or just the game is too low? Everything is low. Uh, I can turn it up if you want. Let's see. Alright, hopefully that's better. A big and heavy candlestick. It looks like there used to be two of them. It's a mortar. Mortar and pestle. And a pestle, too. They seem to belong here, but I'll remember where they are in case I need them another time. Oh, another journal page. The doctor is losing it. He's just scribbling down nonsense by now. What will he do if he ever acts on his wild suspicions? It is clear to me what I must do. I am now convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that my wife is unfaithful. They still hide it very well, her and that housemaid. But my logical mind tells me there is no other explanation. Um, for countless hours I have pondered the situation, and the more I think about it, the more certain I become that my judgment is correct. These countless hours are hours I could have spent thinking about my work. It is clear to me that I will never be fully, be able to fully concentrate on the puzzles at hand as long as my thoughts keep creeping back to my wife and her new lover. Oh 
oh my gosh. <laughs> this is the very reason that my research is progressing at such an agonizingly slow pace. So it is clear to me what I must do. Belladonna herself is the person who I want back into my life, so I cannot punish her. That leaves her lover, the young maid. She is unimportant, and it is, and it is she that must go. Oh, great. I could fire her and throw her out of the household, but I fear this would not resolve anything. The two of them would still know of each other, and they could write secret forbidden love letters or meet up at sec secluded rendezvous. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, seriously, drama. No, it is clear to me what I must do. I must get rid of the maid for good. Uh-oh. Murder! A plan is already taking form in my head. In the greenhouse out back, I keep a lot of plants and herbs. One of the specimens I have is called Deadly Nightshade. An interesting plant with many medis medical uses, but its renown comes from the fact that it its extract is lethal already at small doses. Oh, great. Preparing a powder from this poisonous plant is not at all problematic. Getting the victim to ingest the dose will be a challenge, but I expect to have ample opportunity. They are not aware I know the truth, and they suspect nothing. The maid will fall ill, and within a short time she will die of seemingly natural causes. No one will be the wiser concerning the true circumstances of her demise. This is horrible. Deadly Nightshade is merely the common name for this plant. Its scientific name is Atropa Belladonna. Oh, look at that. Belladonna. The symmetry strikes me as beautiful. The poor, poor girl strayed too close to the Belladonna, and that would be the death of her. <laughs> well, damn. That's pretty dark. A beautiful china bowl. It looks hand-painted. The name on the plaque is Lucas von Trauerschloss. This must be the ashes of Wolfram's son. That name, oh my gosh. The label says Dr. Wolfram von Trauerschloss. So this is the man who brings the dead back to life. He looks as though he would have been handsome once. It's warm. I haven't realized until now just how cold my body is. Yeah, I bet. The story is so sad. I don't even know if I want to read this one. Alright, let's see. My wife took the wayward maid's death harder than I had expected, further confirming my suspicions that they were indeed having a circuitive love affair. Wow. She is passionate and irrational, raging all day and crying all night. Where a few months ago the cold shred of silence lay over our house, now there's a wailing sh Now, well, now there is the wailing shrieks of Bedlam. One should think that she would be used to dealing with the grief of lost ones by now. That is messed up, dude. However, in all sincerity, I don't believe she was ever as affected by the death of our only son as I was. I also suspect that she might have guessed I had something to do with her lover's demise. If she wouldn't talk to me before, now she yells at and barks at my every movement. I hardly leave my laboratory these days. I even have a small bed down here, where I sleep the few hours when I'm not working. All the while, she prowls under the, prowls around upstairs like a hungry tiger and attacks me for over futile nitpicks as soon as I poke my head out. <laughs> hey, they're just me. How's it going? Thanks for the host. Um, what happened to the love we shared when we were married? Uh, we were going to live together in our inherited castle. We were going to have children together. Now all I get is abuse and a cold bed in the basement. Gee, I wonder why. I'm doing alright. Just having fun trying to figure out the story for this game. <laughs> it's really weird. All I want is for things to go back to the way they were before all this. Good luck with that, dude. You screwed up. Oh, thanks for the host. Uh oh. Hey, 
<laughs> she walked all the way around. It's the body of Dr. Von Trauerschloss. He's dead. And what's more, he's been murdered. But who could have done this? Maybe it was you. There must be some clues around. This game looks pretty weird. Never heard of it before. Yeah, I... The missing candlestick. I've, uh, I don't know when I picked it up. Weapon. Actually. I've owned it for a while. Blood is flowing from a wound in his skull. And since it's kind of horror related, I decided to play it. Just a mechanical cadaver like me. I don't and have too many horror games because I don't really like horror games, so. But how can you tell? The back of his head has been cracked open by a heavy blow. He couldn't have seen the attack coming. He was dead before he knew what happened. So. Guess so. He trusted his assailant then. Like I said, me? I think so. I have no memories from my life before. Maybe it was I who killed him. But then, how was I brought back? Good question. The body is still warm. He cannot have been dead for much longer than I have been alive. Did he have to die for me to live? Interesting. These are the hands that give life. Talk about meeting your maker. Creepy. There's a letter clutched in his hand. His final words are a clue left by the killer. <laughs> Alright, let's see what happened. Over the course of a sleepless night, I have thought through my next course of action from every possible angle. For it is indeed time for me to take action again. Even with the troublesome maid out of, out of the way, I see little chance of getting my old Belladonna back. If anything, she is worse now than ever before. But I have an idea, one that kept me awake all night. I have come very far in my research by now. I can now fairly predictably create living creatures that are stable enough to not spontaneously die again. This is consistent through many different species of animals. I have noticed something peculiar, though. The return creation seems strangely vacant and sluggish. It is as if, although the body is brought back to life, the soul is forever lost. The creation is perfectly functional and responds to stimuli just like, just as if it was truly alive. But the mysterious spark of will seems to be missing. I know no other way to describe the phenomenon. That makes sense. This bothered me before now. I cannot help to think that this might suit my needs. Isn't it precisely the strong will of my wife that is causing all my problems? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't tell me you killed her. There is no need to be poetic with flowers this time. I am in no short supply of lethal substances in the laboratory, and poison suits my needs well as it leaves no physical trauma on the body. I will still need to make incisions in the corpse to replace internal organs with clockwork parts, but stitching together surgical cuts is much simpler than trying to repair unhealed bodily damage. The integrity of her visage, visage is a priority. To extinguish Belladonna's current life and give her a new one to bring her body and mind back, minus soul and free will, a beautiful, obedient automation a mechanical doll with all the functionality of a woman, but who is re responsive and does what she's told. That, that, my dear future reader, would truly be something. I think it is high time I try my revivification process. Revivification? I don't even know. Process on a human subject. Oh, God. 